Okay, so new episode of Podcast Show Thing, which is our uh, video podcast. And we're going to have the most guests ever. It's going to be awesome. Well, we thought we'd start by just asking everyone to do the usual, like, who you are and what you're working on, um, so that people who are watching have a sense of kind of who the people in the room are. Uh, I looked at you. Do you want to start, Tony? And then oh, Jesus. Go clockwise. Thank you, Josh. I'm Tony Parisi. I'm a founder of a company in San Francisco called Third Eye. We're making web, VR, and native applications that are virtual reality consumer interfaces to the world's information. Uh, Brandon Jones. I work with Google, and I'm currently implementing WebVR API in Chrome. I also work on WebGL, so I do all of the three Hey, I'm Antti. I'm from a company called Pfizer. We're making an open source visual programming thing that you can use to make WebGL and WebVR and all kinds of web things. And also making a content portal for WebVR content. Hi, I'm uh, Michael Woods. I'm working on some desktop replacement software. I want that ultimate sci fi interface. I have to look right at it. I feel like I shouldn't look right at it. What's like the rule of photography? Right. You can use side long with the long yeah. neck, you know? Like, you just, <laughs> I usually that's right. Don't look extra uh, handsome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah, I get the chin up and the angle. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> My name is Josh Carpenter. Uh, I'm a UX lead for Firefox, or for Mozilla's uh, web VR effort. Uh, and I work with uh, my colleagues Diego and Kevin here, who will introduce themselves, obviously. But yeah, we're trying to bring the web to VR. Hi, I'm Jaco. I work for Visor also. Uh, we make the home of web VR and a graphical programming tool for pretty much jail web VR content. So I'm Diego. I work with Josh and Mozilla on web VR stuff. I've done a lot of stuff, uh, many, many things, and see what, what it sticks. And these days I'm working on Servo in uh, the new browser engine we are doing in Mozilla. Uh, so I'm Hugh and I work with NodeSource and we have also one of the maintainers of Stackyel, which is like a modular framework for connection libraries for blockchain. Hi, I am Isaac. Hi, I'm <laughs> Isaac. Uh, and I, I make stuff under the name Kabibo and I'm working on. Uh, and I'm working on a uh, 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 picture book <laughs> and some other things that are in VR. Uh, I'm Peter. Uh, I do web VR at DeepOcean. I hope I pressed that one right. You did. It's so, it's off. Because it's happy. so it's on. Okay. It right. <laughs> uh, I'm Boris. I did some early stuff on cardboard, like the magnet input. Um, currently thinking about the path to VR from where we are now. Hi, I'm Wilson. I work in Mozilla with Kevin, Diego, and Josh. Um, I'm working on Firefox OS and doing some stuff with web components. I'm Kevin, I'm the Mozilla guy. I'm starting to get my feet with VR, helping to dive in and look at browsing experiences and configuration here. Hi, I'm Andrea. I work at LNVR and we do a lot of both web VR and VR video and play. VR video on the web. And I'm Vi. I am also, I guess, the founder of LNVR. And I mostly do some of the background mathematics stuff for video setups and philosophy and content creation. Hi, I'm Andy. I pretend to help the LNVR people. <laughs> um, I'm Emily. I am, what do we call me? Our producer. That's, that's right. I'm the one editing the show that you're watching, so better like it. <laughs> I'm Jason Marsh, and I'm working with Tony um, at Third Eye, and I'm into uh, idea navigation in virtual reality. I'm Eric Levin. I'm working at High Fidelity, building out a metaverse. I love how this is a game for people who don't want to make eye contact to talk to each other. <laughs> uh, all right, first question, and then uh, we can maybe just kind of throw it to some, we'll pick on people to talk to. It is Christmas 2015. You've just gotten your HTC Vive, you've just gotten your Oculus, you've just gotten your Gear VR, and the home screen is covered in beautiful icons of like amazing games that cost $50 million to make, or a, a movie made by a bunch of former Pixar people. Um, but you gotta separate the two of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why, why would you install something that was a web app, or was the web, and what's going to make you keep coming back to it and using it again and again? Like, what are the killer use cases that are going to make people love the web and virtual reality? Anyone want to take that first? 
You, sir. It's a million dollar question. Uh, you can you pass my arms about that long? Um, so, I think that uh, the, the best... Oh, it's off, oh god, what do I do? Push the button. Yeah. Yeah, it was a happy turn. <laughs> um, so I think that the, the, the thing about WebVR that makes it really special is the web part of it. Obviously, like, um, you don't, like, everything that you create as a, as a programmer or uh, any sort of content creator gets put on a place, and it gets put on a place that is linked to other places. So when you make something and you are not just making the single entity that is that specific piece of content, but also the like entire internet itself. So like every every single contribution that you make, you get to like contribute to a bigger thing, which is really, really great. But it means that somebody who is going and exploring and constantly coming back to it because like the web is a single thing that is always changing and always evolving. Like you aren't you aren't dealing with something that you go and once you complete that experience, that is the same experience that you're gonna have every time, or the possibility of space is very well defined. So like Skyrim, even if you pay, play it like a hundred times, you'll have a hundred different experiences, but you're never gonna like accidentally happen upon a portal to, you know, like a bunch of pictures flying by and dragons that are made out of letters. You know, like you-, you, you So you're in it for serendipity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm in it for like, Weird shit. I'm in it for like, like, like seeing things that I don't want to see or didn't expect to see, or like, like I will only see for five seconds. Like right now, all the all the web or all of the VR apps that we see, like you download it, you spend whatever two minutes downloading it. Finally, you've downloaded it. You boot it up. You take out your Oculus. You put on your Oculus. You look at it and you're like, oh, this is really cool for a few minutes. And then you're like, okay, I'm done with this. Then the next experience, you have to go, you have to find it, download it, wait a few minutes, put it on. But with like WebVR, you get to like have like these like five second experience where you're just like, this is just a spinning cube, this blows. But then you're just gonna go, okay, next experience. Yeah. You know, I don't wanna have to wait two minutes to look at a stupid spinning cube. But because like you are permitted to make that stupid spinning cube, like you're permitted to also make like other really dumb, small, experimental things and we're going to see like a lot more weird stuff that like makes people vomit and a lot more weird stuff that like makes people hate VR and a lot more weird stuff that is like 99% of this is really really horrible but there's this like 0.001% of it that might be useful and I think that that's what we really need for VR so hopefully like a lot of this happens before Christmas 2015 but I'm, I'm also hoping that a lot of people who are getting these things will want to be participating in making this like weird screwed up world. <laughs> Next. There's one on the front of my current Yeah, GeoCities. Now it's off. Now it's off. Sorry. So the web took off coming on 20 years ago now because people had free and unfettered access to information. They didn't have to go through an app store. They didn't have to go download updates every time they wanted to read the news again. It was just there every time they hit their site. If we don't have web style free and unfettered access to VR, we're going to have, you know, Hollywood productions, and games, and maybe a few high-end news services like CNN, and that's gonna be it. We're never gonna see the weird fucked up shit that Isaac's talking about. We're never gonna be able to experiment and share and somehow maybe just grab something that's the equivalent of use source or download it onto my own, you know, dev site. Without that sort of freedom and interoperability, we're just gonna be seeing large studio productions and the experiences that we're all gonna have access to are gonna be severely limited. Yeah, it feels like with, oh, sorry. It's off. Sorry. I was just gonna throw in, a, it, it feels like with big budget comes big conservatism. Like you have a hundred million dollars, you're gonna build an app. Well, it's gonna be like Call of Duty version 15 mm -hmm. because you have to kind of go where the money is to get a return on that investment. But if you're just a 16 year old who knows a little bit of markup, you can do whatever the hell you want. You can just kind of throw it out there. So I think the low barrier to entry of the web encourages a sort of uh, a freedom to experiment. And also, it's got to be said, too, the lack of censorship. There's no gatekeeper for the web. You just publish it, and it's good to go. Um, and so it's the perfect <laughs> medium to just kind of have fun to experiment with. Yeah. <laughs> There's an arguable statement. <laughs> um, so to me, I feel like a lot of what makes the web different and distinct from games and unity 
is in, it all comes down to representation of self, or as you said earlier, geocities. Um, where <laughs> instead of having something that exists, you're like, well, what is it that really makes this site or this page unique to myself? Um, and we know that today is Facebook. It's been many things. Um, and the big question to me comes in, uh, how do we do this? How do we represent self? And there are some, a, a whole lot of not very strong answers. Like, okay, maybe there's some way we can create art, but we don't really know what it is yet. Or maybe, maybe I can take a three-dimensional picture with a camera, but that technology doesn't exist yet. Or maybe there's, um, I was talking with Brandon earlier, maybe by simply acting within a VR scene, uh, there, I am frictionlessly creating a, a story about what I did. And maybe that's worth sharing. Okay, new rule. The person holding the camera is not the person talking because all of you gesture like this. <laughs> the camera, there's That's a person part of the internet! Yeah, the the person next to you can hold the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I'm supposed to hold it for an active rule. I think that's... I think I wrapped that yeah. one up. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good rule. We need a robot that just goes towards where, where the sound is automatically and just kind of wanders around in the middle. Yeah, I guess the three of us are so used to recording things that we just have like amazing still <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that the ideal web VR browser is one that you never see. Like you're not even going to be aware that it's there. I mean, you kind of know it's there, but it's just this universe around you. It's not taking up all of your visual space with toolbars and stuff. And I do like the idea of having your home page, which is your virtual house with your avatar, and maybe there's compatible websites where you can import your own avatar, that there's just a standard for that where it does it. That would be nice, although I would not like it to be necessary. But it should, you should not see it as being a browser so much as being a place. Mm -hmm. How is this like the Internet of Things? Mm -hmm. How is it not at all? Some of the mobile apps we have. The web is back in mobile apps, but you don't have URLs for most of the things. Mm -hmm. okay. do, do you want to be my camera holder? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, what what I tend to think of as more interesting than the idea of what a, what is a VR browser is maybe the transition that we get there. Because I think most people look at it and say, well, yeah, the VR browser should basically just be like the metaverse, right? Metaverse with URLs, something like that. Um, but we are going to go through a transition phase. Um, and it's going to be a very lengthy one because there is a lot of content out there that is, uh, okay, can I use the word legacy now? You know, that seems a little pre classic. preemptive, but yeah, classic <laughs> content. Yeah. There you go. No, 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 no. That gives it too much respect. Uh, <laughs> this is this is true. Hey. I, I would I would have to say Long tail. Geo cities is the only I, I, I would hesitate to like, you know, label anything related to four four chan as classic. But um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, no, we are gonna have a we are gonna have a long time where that that content exists. Possibly forever. And so we need to make a reasonable way for that to punch its way through into a more virtual environment. Um, and it's probably just going to be a floating quad in space with your, your uh, legacy browser content mapped onto it. Um, and maybe that's okay, but you know, I, I think that that transition is going to be the more interesting part because it seems to me like the endpoints are, are a little bit more clear and how we intermix them is not. Do you think that when you say the endpoint, like I really don't, um, like a lot of people, we talk about like bringing classical things or legacy things into like this VR space, but um, like at the endpoint, do you see if if in this world, like there, you know, like then there's only like a VR browser and people tend to shy away from 2D screens, do you think that there will be people who are creating content that is still for a quad in space, or do you think that people will be creating more exclusively like for VR content? Both, both. Because you're like, we're not going to stop having laptops, we're not going to stop having smartphones. Like, new technologies don't tend to totally destroy the existing technology. We also yeah. have radios, yeah. right, like, radios, right. so a really successful medium. They kind of join the pantheon of active technologies. So I think that I can imagine that I have actually I have a bet with a coworker that says Apple will still be selling um, desktop PCs with like keyboards and fixed screens within ten years. And that was two years ago, so eight years from now, and that they'll still be useful and, and part of the system. But um, so I think that you'll see websites that are actually made to be 
predominantly view it on these kind of devices or flat kind of 2D displays. Um, but then you'll also see websites that are designed to be like, that are exclusively, like actually Rainbow Membrane yeah. is a really exquisite example of an experience that you can look at it on a 2D screen, but man, you, the, all the value of that is when you put on that headset and then you just get addicted to this beautiful kind of world. So I think that we're gonna see a full mm -hmm. spectrum and then the web platform people are gonna actually create the enablers that let a web dev say, like on Wikipedia, I've got millions of, of sites. I'm not gonna create WebGL versions of all these things. What I'm gonna do is like add a little bit of CSS that looks and listens for a VR context and then enables it to be, perhaps just the typography is, is, is better formatted. Perhaps it's horizontal, right. not vertical, you know? Right. I'll do a little quick kind of like high leverage moves that make it work better in VR, mm -hmm. even if it's not like optimized for VR. Or, or even like, like the content can still be the same, but like maybe the layout of it is more galaxy oriented. Exactly, yeah. right. Like, responsive web design. There, there's, yeah, there's a huge uh, movement right now towards responsive layouts 